Welcome to another episode of Superfast Corner. I'm your host, Kevin Mueller, and today we're going to be talking about Droop. So first, let's talk about what Droop is. Droop is when you put your car, or the difference between when you put your car on the ground and it's fully weighted and the suspension is compressed, versus when you take it off the ground and the suspension is allowed to relax or droop down. And that diff difference between your car being compressed, the springs being compressed, and the springs being uncompressed is droop. And we're gonna talk about how that affects the handling of your car. So droop is a little bit tricky because the more droop you have on one end of the car actually creates more grip on the opposite end of the car because droop allows the chassis to either uh, tilt forward and backward longitudinally or roll left and right laterally. So for example, let's say that you had some droop in the front of the car under acceleration, the front of the car could lift up and this would allow the weight to be transferred to the rear of the car giving you more rear grip. And vice versa, if we had less droop in the rear of the car under deacceleration or braking, the rear end of the car wouldn't allow, because it has less droop, wouldn't allow too much weight transfer forward and that would actually give you less grip entering the, in the corner. So droop can affect opposite ends of the car and also affects the roll of the car. The more droop you have in a suspension system, the more the chassis is allowed to roll and this can change how the weight is transferred in a corner. Okay, so now you know a little bit about droop and what it does. Let's take a look at how you measure it. And I'm going to show you how to accurately measure your droop using the MC3 WLS droop gauge and the ride height gauge system. Okay, so let's go in for a closer look. All right. So as you know here, we, you can see here, we got a, a atomic MRZ chassis with our rear magnetic shock and we're gonna evaluate or look at uh, droop. So the first thing we need to know is the ride height when the car is sitting on the ground and the suspension is compressed. Now, of course, you would usually do this with a battery uh, on the car just to get the full weight of the car, but for our video purposes, we, we took it out so that you could get a better understanding, you could see a little bit easier. So the first thing is, you know, make sure you have the car here. You want to maybe compress it a little bit so that suspension is at its resting place. And then we're going to take a look at the droop. So we're going to measure the front here and we can see that it's about 2.4 millimeters of uh, ride height in the front and in the rear. We're going to see it's about also just a little bit more, I would guess 2.5 millimeters of ride height in the rear of the chassis. You want to make sure that you are actually measuring it on the chassis plate itself at the rear and not on the motor mount plate uh, because there can be some tilting of that motor mount plate which would give some incorrect um, readings. Okay, now that you've measured your ride height, now you can measure droop. So the first thing you need to do is take your droop blocks. Uh, we're going to move the car off for a second. You want to set them slightly apart and it's very important that you're using a hard surface that's nice and level when you do this. Um, we're going to reset the chassis back on top of the droop blocks and you want to make sure that the rear droop block is sitting on the rear part of the chassis and once again not on the motor mount plate itself uh, and then I like to do a little test here so it's all moving just to make sure it's not wiggling so I wanted to show you there here we go here's some wiggling so we'd have to make sure we take that out so I think this block here in the rear wasn't set right and now you can see minimal uh, roll in the chassis okay so now we're going to take our droop gauge um, obviously we've lifted up the car off the ground this is let allowed the suspension to uh, roll down so then we just take our droop gauge and we can measure the droop and you see here at the tire it ends at about 2.6 so if you remember my front ride height was 2.4 and here uh, my droop measurement is 2.6 which means I have 0.2 of a millimeter 
of uh, droop in the front of this car. Okay, and of course you could measure the opposite side at the same time. But, and then of course I'm gonna just show you this. I already knew that there was gonna be some droop because if you could see here with me wiggling this, I got some slop in my suspension system and that's creating my 0.2 millimeters of droop in the front of the car. Now here's a little bit different of our system compared to other systems. Uh, you're gonna notice here that um, I got a problem. And that is that at the rear of the chassis, I can't use my droop block to measure the rear because it's too low. So the great thing that we have here is that you can actually muse these blocks on both sides. So here I've raised it from six millimeters to eight millimeters. So now it's actually gonna get a little bit higher off the ground, as you can notice. And you probably won't see on camera, but we have additional measurements on the side here that you're now gonna use uh, to measure the rear droop, okay? So once again, I'm gonna slide this through here and take a close measurement. And it obviously falls on this negative 1.4, uh, but that wouldn't make sense because negative 1.4 and the rear was 2.5 uh, ride height. So I'm gonna look on the side here and it says negative 3.4. So I basically have my one millimeter of rear suspension travel. So if I wanted to have less rear suspension travel in the rear, I can simply use the droop adjustment nut here on the MC3 WLS magnetic shock. I'm gonna turn it in, sorry. And as I turn it in, you can notice that the rear suspension is going to come up. And if I have everything still aligned properly, when we go to measure it again, we're gonna notice, nope, what happened? Sorry, yeah, and then when we go back to measure it again, we're gonna notice that the ride height now is a lot different. So remember it was negative 1.4, now I've changed it to negative 1.2, which on here is uh, a little bit higher, so negative 3.2. So that difference means that now I have less droop in the rear because obviously, uh, you know, it's sagging to 3.2 versus 3.6, we've, decrease the droop by 0.4 of a millimeter. Okay, so I hope that helps you with adjusting your droop. Um, in the front of the suspension system, there's one more thing I need to tell you, and that is to adjust or change the droop, you need to do two things. One is adjust your preload on your suspension, and two is to measure your downstop travel. So I'm gonna just flip this car around and show you how you do this with the MC3 droop gauge system. So on the, if we flip the car around, we wanna take off the wheel and it's these suspension arms here that we're really uh, focused on. And we wanna make sure that left and right both are balanced. And if you own a, any one of these cars with the double AM suspension system, all of them nowadays come with a droop screw, which is just back there and that you need a, to adjust with uh, usually a Phillips screwdriver. So now here I can just easily measure my height of my um, suspension arm here, which basically if I go here, you can see it's at plus 0 0.2 millimeters. So it's actually above the chassis, which because of the suspension geometry and MRZ, that makes sense because the uh, lower suspension arm is actually raised above the chassis. So uh, I would you know, make sure that my both downstrops left and right are set the same. This gets the car perfectly balanced and then we can measure droop and adjust the droop using the preload. So obviously if I back these out, the suspension is gonna compress more and that will give me more droop. And if I, uh, twirl these in, so the uh, preloads, then it, the suspension's gonna have less droop. Thanks for watching another episode of Superfast Corner. I'm your host, Kevin Mueller. Thanks for watching. <laughs>